So I think uh, we are online again. Uh, hello and welcome Microbe Hunter here and welcome again to another Saturday microscopy live stream. Well, uh, here we are again uh, today. Uh, I wanted to show you some Daphnia with your water fleas. You see one uh, right now here in the background. And I also prepared some Artemia brine shrimp, uh, also known as sea monkeys, that I also would like to show you. Uh, and uh, as always, I would like uh, to ask you please to give me a short feedback if you are um, able to hear me and uh, if everything works out fine. And uh, it's also been a little bit of a tradition to tell me or to tell everyone where you are from. Usually we've got uh, people joining in from all over the world. Okay. And uh, I hope uh, that uh, again today there will be lots of people joining in. Okay. Very nice. Okay. I already get the first uh, chat messages that everything is, is fine. So uh, I'll spend the first couple of minutes again <laughs> reading out a little bit some of the chat comments here. So looks and sounds good here in, uh, yeah, uh, from the United States, uh, from Denmark, uh, St. Louis. Good evening from a, a very wet Netherlands. Uh, yeah. From New Zealand. Yorkshire, Scotland, okay, Tennessee. Oh, I love this. <laughs> uh, we're all happily united uh, by a common hobby here. Okay, UK, uh, greetings from Slovakia. Okay, so uh, what I'll be doing today is, is I want to show you a couple of, uh, yeah, uh, nothing, nothing totally special, but maybe some of you have not yet seen uh, those water fleas uh, uh, quite big. Uh, and um, I will do that. Uh, however, I did uh, also uh, want to start off uh, with um, a uh, something slightly different because I've promised some of my viewers uh, some other things and I would like to do the following. And maybe you've already uh, seen some of them, uh, the pictures before, but uh, there were a few pictures that I was not able to show yet. I would like to catch up on that. And uh, because some people sent me uh, their home lab, pictures of their home lab uh, to be shared uh, in the live stream. I've al already shown some of those pictures um, already in the previous uh, weeks, but uh, I think some of them I did not <laughs> show yet. And uh, the pictures here should motivate everyone one uh, a little bit uh, also to set up a home lab but of course uh, some of the yeah, workspaces look kind of elaborate over here depends of course also a little bit on how many microscopes you have but this is uh, one of the pictures that I got and uh, yeah there you can see that there is uh, quite a little bit of lab equipment here several microscopes obviously yeah. So this one over here as well, um, it uh, also shows uh, a, a setup uh, with a computer next uh, to uh, the microscope. It's also sometimes quite useful, especially if you connect a USB camera um, to, uh, to your microscope. Yeah, this is a different view over here. Um, I personally have the computer separated a little bit because I'm a little bit worried of spilling some liquid and water over the computer and over the laptop. But again, if you work uh, with uh, prepared slides a lot, then this is of course not a, not a problem. Yeah. Yeah, this one over here was actually one of my first ones uh, that I got. You can see me and also in the background uh, there. Yeah, here uh, it was the picture was a screenshot while I was actually doing uh, one of the live streams. Yeah, so yeah, here I'm in the background and uh, yeah, here it's also pretty large uh, workspace. Uh huh. Now I don't see my face uh, anymore. Uh, for whatever reason, I disappeared there. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, this here is now my uh, my studio in the cellar uh, from where I'm doing my making my videos. I've uh, basically uh, set up a separate uh, small room um, so where I can um, do all of the recordings without any any problems over here. Yeah, this one another workspace. Yeah, sometimes it's actually quite convenient to have the workspace. Uh, yeah, in the apartment so that uh, the microscope is is a set uh, is a kind of uh, available all the time. It's also quite a, a, a an advanced uh, workspace over here. Yeah, we've seen this already. What else do I have? Yeah, I think these were the pictures. Uh, these were the pictures I think that, was, that which I was not able to show yet previously. Yep. Yeah, and so um, as you can see, um, there are different uh, different ways of setting up. Uh, yeah, one's table and one's room. Yeah, and uh, we're finished here. <laughs> okay, so let's go back all the way again to the yeah uh, to the ah yeah. Uh, to the Daphne over here. I'm going to read out some of the questions again. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Yorkshire from Scotland, Tennessee, UK, Slovakia, UK again. Always pleasure to watch you. First time to see you live. <laughs> Hello and welcome again here. Dark field, uh, uh, oh yeah, of uh, kale bacteria, Minneapolis. 
Okay, uh, yeah, there are a few people who are basically here the first time from the west coast of the United States. Okay, from Spain. Hello. Yeah, um, so if you're new uh, to this live stream, um, I just want to quickly introduce myself because every uh, week I've got some new viewers. Uh, so first of all, um, if uh, for whatever reason you cannot uh, stay the full time, maybe or it's maybe in the middle of the night uh, where you are from, um, all of those live streams are of course available later on online um, in the form of videos, um, completely um, incomplete. Um, and uh, if you're interested in hobby microscopy, of course, this is one of the channels but I do also have a second channel uh, a slightly larger channel um, it's called, I simply call it microbe hunter and this one over here is uh, similarly called microbe hunter microscopy um, so I'm in the main channel I'm also uploading uh, videos uh, several times a week now yeah and the live streams I'm doing over here because I simply want to sometimes an, uh, yeah respond to a couple of questions that you might have um, and uh, we're just having a little bit of fun together here okay so um, yeah he uh, hello from Berlin yes UK here just bought my first microscope this week after binge watching wow okay <laughs> yeah um, I watch most of your videos and live stream in the evening okay that's very nice so what I'm going to do is so basically showing a couple of those uh, home lab uh, pictures was one of the promises that I wanted to fulfill and there was one um, user who also requested um, yeah a, a so-called a CD-ROM centrifuge and I have to tell you bad news and good news um, because I made um, uh, I've presented some uh, weeks ago um, a centrifuge and a centrifuge is uh, something that allows you to concentrate uh, water microorganisms and say, well actually you might be able to actually make one yourself using an old CD-ROM and, um, and I have to tell you I um, didn't quite work out but I do have a better solution that I would like to show you. The idea is the following. Um, Basically, uh, what I have here is a yeast suspension, okay? And then later on, I'll go back again to the Daphne and to the to the sea monkeys, okay? But I quickly want to show this here. And um, the idea is the following. Um, is this, and Let's say that this is some kind of a pond water um, sample that you want to concentrate. And what you do is, is you simply, yeah, I put some um, over here. I've got some, um, some cable binders, okay? And the idea was kind of to kind of put it in like this and then kind of to spin it by using two strings and by pulling the, the CD-ROM apart or by mounting it to a, um, to an electrical drill. Now I have to tell you I did not get it to spin quite well okay so uh, this uh, solution with the CD-ROM was not a solution but what I want to show you is, is something else. I want to show you another little contraption that I made using simply a piece of wood again some cable binders and um, yeah, you, all you do is, is you put whatever uh, uh, sample you want to centrifuge you put it in here just some regular cable binders and um, I think using an electrical drill is actually much better and easier and I'm just going to show you that this actually works so again these are, it's a yeast suspension simply some yeast and water uh, to demonst for demonstration purposes okay so this is an electrical um, yeah, drill and or also an electrical um, how do you call this a, a screwdriver okay so and uh, I'm just going to hold it up now okay and then all you do is is so that you're able to see Okay, yeah, it's got to be a little careful here. And you spin it, okay, for a couple of uh, for a couple of minutes. Okay, I just want to show you now after you've spinned it, and I need to go down here again. You actually start to see that the cells start to form a pellet down here. I don't know if you're able to see this. Okay. So basically, um, yeah, and if you just put the, yeah, so you see that um, it starts to become concentrated here. And so that's a quick way of, of concentrating specimens, especially if you, for example, have pond water where there's some algae, some, some planktonic algae floating around and you want to concentrate them. Um, yeah, so then that would, would be one possibility. And I found this uh, to work easier than the CD-ROM. Why the CD-ROM um, um, example? Because um, I got the, the, the tip uh, by that some people online, they made so-called paper centrifuges. So instead of using a CD-ROM, they used a circular piece of paper and then they put some two strings here and then by kind of twisting it and pulling it apart, you're able to spin it quite rapidly. Um, but I was not able to get it uh, the CD-ROM to spin uh, smoothly. It kind of started to vibrate and go all over the place for this reason I think that the one with the drill is actually a better uh, solution of an improvised centrifuge okay so I simply wanted to catch up on that because I kind of promised uh, to, uh, to give you a short demonstration of this so every now and then I'm going to jump back to the to the comments and uh, see if there are any questions or anything okay um, yeah watch most of the yeah uh, 
Are those COVID packs, you mean those little, um, you mean those tubes here, these are called Eppendorf tubes and they're uh, uh, used very commonly in molecular biology. You can buy them online. Um, usually, um, yeah, if you do DNA uh, extraction uh, in anything which is done in molecular biology, you use those Eppendorf uh, vials or Eppendorf tubes. These are disposable plastic tubes that can be, that can be bought in large quantities also over Amazon. Yeah, so it's one of the standard uh, things uh, because uh, uh, test tubes, glass test tubes are way too large and you have to clean them and wash them and so for this reason those Eppendorf tubes are actually quite nice also for collecting microscopic uh, specimens, okay? Um, that's a brilliant invention. Would you consider the patented? No, <laughs> I think just a second I'll put the drill away. Um, <laughs> I cannot patent this because um, I probably won't get a patent for this. It was, it's uh, not a completely new idea either. <laughs> okay, okay. So, sp I, I spinned it, yes, <laughs> or spun it. With which camera is it made the beautiful photo of the Daphne and now what kind of camera are you using? Okay, <clears throat> every now and then I do get a couple of questions um, um, about the technical setup. Um, I'm also going to talk about this a little bit um, because some people sooner or later might also want to share a little bit. So this one over here is uh, done with my, um, yeah, with um, a DSLR, digital reflex camera, which I mounted to my microscope and it's connected over USB to the, the camera, uh, to the computer. Okay, and then another thing that I have uh, over here, I'm going to move it in place here. This now shows me a stereo microscope, okay? And uh, so I'll be also showing you a stereo microscope. So whoop, I bumped through over a little jar over there. Yeah, so this is uh, basically also another camera that I'm using over here. It's a USB camera for my stereo microscope. Okay. And uh, over here, this is a ring lamp. And, um, and in front here, this one over here, that is a webcam that I'm using. So I'm using the, um, a software called OBS Studio, which is a free software to combine actually right now three different cameras. One here, okay, then one on the, um, yeah, on, on the, yeah, the, the, the microscope, okay, which is a different microscope and then um, the webcam where you can see my face, okay. Everything is combined and then everything goes on, on YouTube, okay. Um, so, um, um, would you try to improve your invention with uh, old hard drive since it appears to be more stable from its... <coughs> that would be an interesting thing kind of to take apart a hard drive uh, and then spin it and somehow mount it there. But I don't know if the hard drive motor is strong enough to do that. Okay. Does the viscosity of the immersion oil matter in what way? Uh, which immersion oil? Well, if you're using immersion oil, then it should already have a defined viscosity. But uh, if you're referring to the tubes over here uh, or I guess you, you mean not the immersion oil but maybe the the water that surrounds the Daphnia this is just regular uh, regular water okay so there is no immersion oil here used okay this uh, the Daphne here is in in regular water and I'm using now my four times uh, four times um, objective Okay. Hi Oliver from Poland I have a question I'm currently using Swift 380B I will soon change to Motic uh, will there be a notable difference in your opinion? Okay, I will be very honest with you. Um, if the if it is a bright field microscope, okay, um, there will not be a significant notable difference. Um, the optics uh, of uh, standard microscopes that you have right now are pretty much already at the limit. Um, of course, there are sometimes some more expensive optics available like plan objectives or, or, or so on, um, apochromatic objectives. But I would say that the uh, improvement is marginal, but some people need even a small improvement. And uh, this is the reason why um, those uh, objectives exist. I would say you just try it out. I would say that uh, optics and image quality is not the only thing. Um, I would say um, also the general ergonomics and size of the microscope matters and, and so on. Yeah? But uh, don't expect miracles. Yeah? You will, uh, this is regular bright field. You're, um, if you, with, a, um, with pretty much any microscope, you're able to see it like you see it over here. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is, is um, I'm going to um, um, uh, simply yeah, show you maybe a few other things here now under the stereo microscope. Okay? So this here um, is uh, now with light coming from the bottom. Okay, and yeah, but before I do that, I want to show you some, some other things here. Okay, I've got a, a pointing arrow over here. Um, of course, there are the organs in here, but look at the thing here in the back here. Do you see this pumping? That is the heart. And later on, what I would like to do is I would like to do a, a, a little experiment. Actually, it's a standard school experiment. I'm going to add a little bit of caffeine 
uh, to the daphnia and you should be able to see that the heartbeat starts to increase. So this is a standard experiment that is um, done in, also in schools uh, when you do a little bit of uh, you know, microscopy and they respond also to caffeine. Okay, so um, and uh, what you do is, is uh, um, basically you make a video of this and then you can count the heartbeats uh, per minute. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'll read again a couple of uh, questions over here. Okay, um, uh, my cross is can be controlled when an internal circuit is disabled and applied an external circuit. You can check out videos on YouTube as well. Some people make it as a polisher. Ah, I see. This refers back to the uh, this, uh, refers back to the the hard disk um, as a. Um, uh, as a centrifuge. Okay. Hi, sir. I wanted to ask if semi plant up uh, achromatic lenses are good enough for microscopy as a hobby. <laughs> of course, they're good enough. I mean, they are, um, you don't even need semi plant achromatic objectives. Even the non semi plant, uh, uh, just regular achromatic objectives are, are good enough. I mean, they're, of course, uh, of course, they're good enough. Um, I mean, let's put it this way, if you have highly specific requirements or if you want to do advanced or more advanced photography and if you don't like to have um, you know, chromatic aberrations or so on, then of course it might be uh, worth thinking about something else. But generally uh, my suggestion is that you always start off with the more economical um, uh, microscopes and then you basically, uh, when you're outgrowing it, then you upgrade. Okay, that that's generally my recommendation. Otherwise, uh, and we've had honestly, I have to also say, um, I also made a video recently about this. I got an email from someone who was actually quite disappointed. He spent quite a bit of money on on a more expensive microscope, but then he saw that the image quality was not so much better. Okay, and uh, but he was so much more worried about using the microscope about damaging something. So actually, he then returned the microscope and got himself a cheaper one because he said it's perfectly fine. No. So what I'm going to do now is, is um, yeah, so I'm going to now switch over and I'm going to now show you uh, this um, the view from a stereo from my stereo microscope. OK, so this is now, um, yeah, basically the, um, yeah, the stereo microscope here. There is you won't be able to see this because it's too bright. Yeah, but there is over here. I'm going to make it dark now so that you see this better. There is a small glass Petri dish that I'm uh, yeah. I've got here and uh, yeah what I have is um, is I simply put the Daphnia um, yeah on the Petri dish um, to be observed and uh, what you're able to see is that some of them actually also carry some eggs okay so where is my arrow over here uh, so maybe in here in the back the, those black dots that you see could be some eggs a little bit difficult to see here in the background these are the the larvae there are also some larvae that um, are in here, so they started to reproduce. You might now wonder where can you get those Daphnia? Well, of course, they are freshwater in freshwater ponds. But if you don't have a freshwater pond uh, near you and you still would like to have them, all you do is you buy them from a shop for aquariums because people buy those uh, yeah, water fleece, those Daphnia as fish food. And this is actually where we got it, where I got it from. I simply walked into a, a, zoo, a, a zoo shop for fish and for aquarium and they sold those there. Yeah. Uh, because uh, they're fish food and uh, then uh, you can also get them and uh, you can breed them because I think they're quite interesting and especially if you're an educator uh, and if you need them for, for I don't, in case I'm, I'm, a, I'm in my real job so to say in, my, in the real world I'm a teacher and uh, we're doing experiments with those and we're using them for microscopy to get also the kids interested a little bit um, yeah in, in these uh, yeah, things so what I want to show you is something else a little bit of a demonstration also with a stereo microscope um, so first of all, uh, what I have here is the following and maybe you have to look again a little bit here in the corner. Okay, here in the corner, what I'm doing right now. So down here you see the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Petri dish and um, I'm going to explain you this here is a, an LED ring light and something that you cannot see here but here in the bottom um, of the objective, this part here is a so-called a Barlow lens, which reduces the magnification. Normally people say, okay, you have to always increase the magnification. You want to have more magnification. But uh, in my case, uh, this, uh, the magnification was too much. So I added a Barlow lens, which actually made everything much smaller. Okay. Um, otherwise I would not have been able to fit almost the whole Petri dish in here. Yeah. So, but if you say you would like to have a higher magnification, then I do have a zoom, a continuous zoom to zoom in. And uh, yeah, then you see everything, of course, much larger. You have to, you might have to refocus a little bit, but you're also going to see it. It's kind of a little bit blurry, right? Ah, look, here you see some, some of the eggs in this one over here, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, 
that is a little bit unfortunate so i'm not totally happy with the image quality that i of my setup it's not only a camera thing um but it's uh, also a um yeah maybe the camera optics as well yeah and also the lack of contrast a little bit and uh, what you can do however is the following and i also tried that um, what i'm going to do now is uh, again look in the corner here what i'm doing here because what i can you know what i'm just for the fun of it i'm just going to make this a little bit larger can i make this larger i'm going to make this a little bit larger now okay and uh, look what i'm able to do here i'm able to get this out here and i'm able to flip it around and here i have a dark background okay and uh, let's make it small again and uh, then we're able to again uh, see it slightly differently okay so that is one possibility and another thing that i tried is, is to switch this here off and to use a flashlight because sometimes a flashlight also works better why am i telling you all uh, from the side okay so why am i telling you all of this uh, simply to encourage you to experiment around a little bit okay yeah so and then of course we can zoom in and, and zoom out and now we can also see the larvae much better the larvae are um yeah uh the where's the arrow over here yeah are those tiny ones that are can be seen sometimes floating around in, in the back you like this one over here yeah they look different okay so and what i would like to do now is i would like to again go back to the microscope view over here and I'm just going to try something that I have not tried yet. I'm going to switch or turn off the light here. I'm going to now use the flashlight. Okay. And um, with a light from the top now. And you see that this also gives a different image a little bit. After we focus a little bit here. Look how transparent it looks. So this is basically, I'm doing this simply to, to motivate you a little bit to experiment around with different lighting techniques. Okay. Uh, because uh, they can reveal different structures. Okay. In this case, in case you're wondering, this uh, uh, Daphne over here is now on my microscope slide in a drop of water without a cover glass because a cover glass would kind of squash it. Um, and uh, yeah, the drop of water is not uh, too thick for it to actually swim away. Yeah. So just wanted to, to uh, yeah, let's turn on the light here again a little bit. Okay, so let, I'll read again a couple of... Uh, a couple of uh, um, uh, questions here or comments. Okay, I want a semi plan. They're not as cute or uh, as relatable as the pictures of the sea monkeys. I'm going to show you the sea monkeys in a minute or so. Are you sure you have the right species? Okay, these are not sea monkeys. These are Daphnia. Okay, Daphnia are freshwater uh, crustaceans. And uh, the sea monkeys are over there. <laughs> yeah. um, the sea monkeys are Artemia salina. And yeah, they look, don't, they look very different in the cartoon. Okay. <laughs> um, what's my favorite thing to look at with a microscope? Honestly, uh, that's difficult to say. Um, a lot of things. Um, I'm, I'm going all across the board a little bit. Um, I have to tell you that uh, I do not have uh, yeah, a specific preference. But, uh, of course, anything that moves is, of course, very exciting. <laughs> because, uh, yeah it kind of uh, is, is uh, interesting and exciting to look at okay um if, if i want to make nice pictures for example then sometimes i actually use permanent slides of cross sections of, of of plant tissue because it looks kind of beautiful as well yeah um the flashlight on the side is similar to the idea of oblique illumination yes that's correct yeah if you have light coming from the side it gives you a, a, a shadow it casts shadows and gives a slightly more three-dimensional views yeah have you any osteocalls on the menu today? No, I don't have any osteocalls today. I did make videos a few years ago where I found some osteocalls in a water sample, but I don't have any here, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, do you make your own regions at home lab for experiments? Uh, yes and no, because I don't do so many experiments at home. Mostly I like to observe uh, the things that I find. Um, I rarely do experiments in, in such a way. Um, occasionally I add, let's say, yeah, some, some, some salt water and see how the pyramidia <laughs> react. Uh, sometimes I add some, some um, uh, disinfectants uh, to some water organisms and then they um, start to, to pop open and spill the cell's contents and I make a YouTube video 
video and some people like watching that. It's actually one of the more successful YouTube videos in my main channel are those where I add some disinfectants uh, to microorganisms. But otherwise I don't do a lot of um, experiments. Some people wanna know what I do with those uh, water fleas. Well, I, of course I return them later back into the jar. Yeah. Um, would you say that those uh, uh, cheap USB microscopes are any good for anything? Are you referring to those? I don't have one here right now. Let me just a second, let me check. I've got one here. I'm not going to connect it now, but maybe you mean those microscopes here? Um, this one was a very, very cheap one. I think I think I only paid around seven euros, which is around eight US dollars. I ordered it directly from China. And uh, are they good for anything? And um, yeah, what you can do is, is uh, uh, they're fun to use, <laughs> uh, but um, they're, they're not uh, of very high, at least this one over here, the very cheap ones are not of a very high quality. Um, but they do have an advantage uh, because they give you an image which is very similar to that of a stereo microscope. Okay, um, so it's a camera, it says you're up to 1000 times, this is a complete nonsense. Okay, it works like this, that there is a, a lamp in here, you can focus this here and you put it on whatever you want to look at and there is also an LED fun to use especially if the objects are flat okay um, and it gives you the um, yeah, a top uh, view um, and are they good for anything of course uh, you also have a lot of fun with them but uh, they definitely cannot replace they cannot replace a, a real real microscope okay uh, but do I recommend them I made again in this channel made some reviews of course get them uh, don't pay too much for them experiment around with them yeah, what have you lost? Okay, and then you can decide for yourself if you find any uses. I think they're quite good, um, especially if you want to, I don't know, want to observe some, you see something somewhere and you just want to have a quick look um, at it, you just put it over it and you can have a look at it. Yeah, so they're quite, uh, quite nice to use. Um, yeah, but uh, definitely cannot replace uh, um, a real microscope. Okay, um, I was told you can use Styrodua to Fixate plant parts for cutting thin slides using ha ah, microtome. Have you used this material yourself and can you give an opinion? Yes, I've used it. Styrodur or styrofoam. Um, basically, can you use uh, the idea is the following. Um, I don't have my, my microtome is in my cupboard. The idea is, is if you want to make very thin cuts of something, um, of a small stem, you have to kind of squeeze it into something. I always use a carrot, but you have to kind of put it into something to hold it. And generally speaking, styrofoam or styrodur is, can be used, but has one huge disadvantage. And the disadvantage is it really makes the knives dull very, very quickly. And the reason is the following because that's what I read, is, is when you cut through styrofoam, um, then um, because of the material, it generates very high heat on the blade because of the friction. And this actually makes the blade dull very quickly. So that's basically just something that I have to uh, say. There are better materials around there, which kind of keep the knife sharp, but it does work, okay? Because I tried it. Um, but um, I found out myself that it actually um, become the knife becomes dull very quickly and I f read that this is because of heat development, very high local heat development. Okay, so um, a few more questions and then I actually want to show you some other things here under the microscope. Okay, um, um, your opinion. Okay, how do you see the paramecium and ciliate so large? It is it the magnification. Well, um, I don't know what specifically you are referring to right now. This one over here is not a ciliate. It is a water flea, and it is huge. It's about three millimeters, yeah, yeah um, um, across. And uh, if you are looking at, uh, at single-celled um, or, uh, uh, organisms like Paramecia, for example, then um, of course you need a, um, you can also see it with 40 times quite small, but you need a higher magnification of let's say 100 times or 200 times at least. Yeah. Um, you know another camera similar to the Summit uh, that is of higher quality for the microscope or similar quality? Um, okay, uh, the question is the following. Um, let me again use this here as an example. So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger here. Okay, so this uh, basically is a USB camera that I'm using. And the question was now is, um, yeah, of a, a camera that actually has uh, the quality nearly of a DSLR. So what I'm gonna do now is the following. I'm gonna take the camera out and I'm just going to show it to you, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the desk view. 
I'm going to tell you, show you now something that is very critical here. So I'm going to take out the camera. Okay, I'm going to put it in here. Okay, and I'm going to now detach and remove the optic simply to show you now um, the thing. Do you, if you see this little square thing in here, that is the sensor. This sensor is significantly smaller than the sensor of a DSLR camera. So one of the important quality characteristics of a camera is, is, is the sensor size. You have to get a big sensor size. And I was actually once given a huge USB camera. When I say huge, I have to put it back on again. I'm saying it was about the, the, the camera because of all the cooling elements, a USB camera that was about this size. Really, it was huge, okay? And this one actually gave, had a huge sensor, and this one actually gave me the quality um, almost of a DSLR camera, but the sensor was, was large, okay? Um, and uh, therefore, I also had very short exposure times and all of the other advantages, and, and it was expensive. I don't remember the price now, but I said it's, it's probably not worth it unless you have really... It was a, sp a special company that actually made it uh, for microscopy, um, and uh, so those cameras do exist, but they're not easily available on the market. You have to actually uh, find specific companies that make them for industrial applications, and then it works, okay? Um, so my other su suggestion would simply be then is uh, to use DSLR cameras because they have general uh, purpose. You can also use them not for microscopy, okay? Let me, because it's kind of, my desk look, does look kind of boring a little bit. <laughs> okay, let me see. Okay, here we go again, okay? Uh, I'm getting carried away now, okay? Um, I agree with you on the 1000, S 1000 times for the, uh, the 1000 times nonsense for a dirt cheap scope. Is it a magnification scheme? On the other hand, it works. Okay, yeah. So the 1000 times, forget about it. It's uh, yeah on this uh, small microscope. I purchased one of those USB microscopes and took it to an elementary school classroom for kids with uh, disabilities. They had a blast looking at their skin. Yes, clothes, paper, leaves from class plants. Exactly. Uh, really, uh, they're easy to use and, uh, by the way, it is also possible to connect uh, those uh, to a, a tablet computer or to a, um, a mobile phone. That's really a nice thing, okay? So you can actually, uh, you, you need an adapter and you can uh, connect it also to a, to a mobile phone. And uh, yeah, that, of course, uh, opens uh, many interesting possibilities. Uh, can you use the USB microscope for live streaming or stills every few seconds? Yes, of course. Um, as a matter of fact, I have used the USB microscope already for live streams. Um, this one right now is using the USB microscope and uh, yeah, I'm using it for live, live stream right now. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's kind of blurry right now a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, can uh, one use the USB microscope for live streaming or stills every few, or USB 2, none with USB 3? So I also have a USB 3 microscope um, uh, camera, um, but uh, the, it's not only the USB 3 uh, camera that's important, the computer must also be able to process USB 3. Okay, so, um, and for this reason, you also need a sufficiently fast computer, um, which is also able to process the, the, the image, okay? Greetings from Mexico. Okay, hello. I have a phone camera that I use to make videos and take pictures, of course. Yes, phone, mobile phones, of course, also work. I've also used them and they work surprisingly well. But you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move on a little bit, okay? Um, because, um, yeah, I just want to show you now. I'm going to, so these were the Daphnia, the, the water fleas. Let's put a lid on top here. And uh, over here, this here are now um, Artemia brine shrimp. Maybe, maybe I'm going to make the, make it bright again. Okay. Yeah. And uh, these are also known as so-called sea monkeys. Okay. And uh, they are sold um, in kits for children <laughs> to, to grow them at home. So you can grow them out of eggs. And these here again were bought in a shop um, for uh, you know, as fish food. So I just want to show you something. What I've got here, <laughs> they're even usually they're sold in small packs. And look what I've got here. Yeah, that's all <laughs> salt and uh, um, Artemia eggs in huge quantities. 
Yeah, I'm also over here, sea salt and uh, Artemia food. So they are sold also in huge uh, quantities um, for um, essentially making large quantities of, of, of fish food. Okay, and then also they are sold um, in just a second. Yeah, I got here. That's, uh, that's how a kit looks like. Yeah, and when you open this, especially if you have children or so, uh, or for schools and you want to get uh, kids uh, excited about, uh, yeah. You had a whole bunch of, of kits in here, and then when you open the whole thing up, you take the, you actually have, yeah, yeah simply a, a bag of Artemia, uh, yeah, eggs, uh, also which is actually also sold as, as fish food, okay, and they simply are rebranding it and reselling it um, in in a kit, yeah, so that uh, yeah you can basically have a little bit of fun at home, yeah. Um, so a nice replacement if you don't want uh, if you don't have uh, um, an aquarium yeah and for example i just want to show you what i've got here yeah that's basically so all the, the little uh, sea monkeys the the artemia artemia brine shrimp saltwater shrimp okay so if you basically um you add regular tap water they don't like it you have to add the the salt as well okay so um yeah so here they are um and what i would like to do now is, is something i honestly have not tried yet uh, i would like to put one of those um uh yeah artemia brine shrimp also under my compound microscope okay so what i'm doing right now is the following i've got a little pipette here and what I've done is I cut off the tip of the pipette because oh, um, the pipettes actually, they, they look like, you know what, I'm going to show you again here under my desk. Here, the desk view. Where's the desk? Yeah, here. That's basically the origin. These are disposable pipettes which you can buy in large amounts, large quantities. And what I've done is I simply cut off the, the tip here um, because uh, this uh, hole is too small uh, to suck up the yeah the little shrimp. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to... Yeah, try to get one of those guys here. You know what? I'm just going to put it here. Where is the camera? Here is the camera. Maybe you want to have some light here. Nah, that's too much light. Yeah, let's just leave it like this. And let's uh, yeah, see if we're a little bit lucky. Yep, I got one. Okay. I got one swimming around here. Um, maybe maybe, uh, maybe it's moving a little too much because the water is too... There's too much water. Ah, let's spread the water a little bit like this, or let's remove some of the water so that it limits the movement a little bit. Okay. You might not be able to see it, but uh, I'm just going to put it under the microscope now. Okay. So here's still the Daphnia. So I'm just going to add. Okay. You cannot see what I'm doing right now because uh, I've got the camera. It's the wrong camera. Let me, just a second. Let me set up the let me set this up for you so that I, you can now see also what i'm doing over there okay here so that is basically the daphnia slide and i'm just going to add the second slide right next to it okay here we go now you can see it okay and uh, let's see if we're able to find it here it is okay yeah here we go uh, yeah. Two nice little eyes. Yeah, same magnification as the Daphnia, but you see, it's it's actually a, a bit bigger. Okay, so a uh, um, couple of uh, of qu uh, qu questions again. That's interesting of the Sea Monkey product. I might grow them um, at one point. Yes, thanks for sharing. Yeah, you can uh, order them in kits uh, or in larger quantities if you actually <laughs> want to. If you have your own aquarium. Yeah. Um, there is a bigger one called a Mega Flop. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, that's interesting to know. I'm going to research this. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I think that's one of the reasons why they're branding those sea monkeys, uh, those Artemia shrimp, or also the children, because uh, they look quite fascinating with all of their little legs here and, yeah, and everything. Yeah. So, and now I would like to try the following. Um, yeah, <laughs> there is a reason. Remember this here from the beginning of the video this year? Yeah, yeast. Okay, so what I want to do now is, is I'm going to feed the sea monkey, the Artemia shrimp. Um, yeah, apparently they also like to eat yeast. Of course, you can buy food, uh, dedicated specific food for them if you want to grow them in large quantities yourself. 
Um, yeah, but uh, what I read is is that they apparently also eat yeast, um, and the interesting thing about ye adding yeast is not so much the feeding itself, but uh, because yeast particles, the yeast particles make the movement of the water more visible. That's actually the reason why I would like to try this. So I'm going to take one of those pipettes here. I'm going to, you know, what I need to sus add a little bit suspect, we suspend it a little bit better after the centrifuging. It was okay. Let's take a small amount of uh, of the yeast um, solution, and I'm going to now add it uh, to the brine shrimp, and let's see what happens. Never, honestly, I've never tried this before, but my hope is is to be able to see a little bit. Here is the yeast to see a little bit the water movement. Okay. Wow, this makes the guy go wild. Either it, wow, look at this. Either. He's happy because it's got some food or he doesn't like it because of, of a different salt water concentration. Who knows? <laughs> but at least I think you get the idea that uh, yeah, uh, by adding uh, yeah, the yeast cells, um, you're able to see much better the, the movement of the water. So um, I sometimes also do this uh, yeah, um, to paramecia and also other water uh, microorganisms. Yeah. Okay, because you can see the streaming of the water much better. This guy's really going crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, hope you get the idea. Um, yeah, I can play around also with a few other things here. Look what I'm doing right now. This here is now... Ah, that's four times. We have to... No, that's nothing. Okay, I have to remove the thing here a little bit. Yep. What I've uh, read uh, that what some people have been doing is, is they have actually been staining the yeast cells as well. And there are certain, um, I think with carmine, you can stain them red. And then when you feed them to certain water microorganisms, you can actually see the digestive system much better because um, as they eat them, uh, it stains uh, yeah, the body as well. Yep. So you know what I'm going to, I want to now try to also add uh, this I'm going to remove the the thing again the okay here is the Daphnia again so let's turn it down a little bit and uh, they also like to eat uh, yeast so I'm going to add also a small drop of yeast here let me see here on the side okay and here again oh stopped moving <laughs> but uh, you should now be able to see at least I've already made a video some time ago where it was actually possible to see how the yeast cells were sucked in so maybe I go up a little bit with the magnification here maybe maybe we're able to follow a little bit better where the yeast cells are going Yep, there's a comment, the environment concentration changes all of a sudden and the organism needs uh, time to get used to the change, yes, especially because the yeast um, water suspension um, is, uh, was uh, fresh water, non-salt water, and of course the Artemia brine shrimp are in salt water. So actually, it's, uh, they probably don't like it. Um, if, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, in any case, I think you get the idea. Maybe this is too too large of a magnification again. Yeah, but in any case, you get the idea that you can now see the the movement of the individual cells much better. Ah, uh, yeah. Why were you hitting the plastic tube with the yeast with your finger? Okay, two. Re uh, yeah, actually, the main reason is the following. Um, I used a, a centrifuge, this uh, homemade centrifuge, and there was a pellet. Um, on the bottom and if you let it stand then the yeast is going to settle down to the, the bottom and uh, then there is too little yeast in the top and I was kind of resuspending it. I was hitting it like this, tapping it to kind of mix it, okay? Instead of shaking it, you see over here, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you a little bit again from the desk view. Uh, maybe have, yeah, you see that there is a tiny little um, yeast uh, pellet here. Okay, and by, by tapping it and shaking it, I'm resuspending it again a little bit. Yeah. 
so that it's uh, properly mixed. Yeah, I have a packet of eggs uh, sold as triops. Yes, these are again different, okay, from the age of the dinosaurs. I think they're also called uh, tadpole shrimp, uh, but I haven't tried them yet. Yes, I know. Uh, I have also not tried them, but I've heard about them as well. Um, these are look, they look like uh, tiny little stingrays almost. Yeah, and they look uh, also quite nice. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, so where is the thing here again? So here we go again. So, um, I don't know what time is it now? Okay, um, I don't know if I, what I could try to do now is the following. Um, yeah, let's do a little experiment. Um, I would like to now try to um, actually mix in a little bit of caffeine. Yeah, um, again, this is a standard experiment that is sometimes done with, uh, uh, yeah, with students. Uh, you can buy caffeine in, yeah, you can either get, uh, make some coffee or buy some caffeine capsules and so on. Um, but what I'm doing right now is the following. I've um, got a little bit of uh, caffeine. I bought the caffeine. I'm not eating this stuff, obviously. But I bought the caffeine because it makes beautiful crystals. So I use this uh, for crystallization um, experiments um, because caffeine makes beautiful crystals. I also made several videos of this. And there are those capsules in there. Okay. And what I've done is, is I've uh, basically cut open a capsule and added a little bit of the caffeine in here. This is not pure caffeine. It contains also a lot of, apparently, according to the ingredients, cellulose to kind of uh, give it more volume. Yeah. And I add a little bit of water here. Now, caffeine does not dissolve very well in water. And um, it won't dissolve completely because there is the cellulose powder in there as well as a kind of a, as a filler. Okay. But, uh, yeah, a little bit might dissolve. And then uh, we're going to add this to some of the Daphnia. Not Daphnia, yeah, to the Daphnia. And we're going to see if the heart rate changes. Okay. What percentage of salt does the water need to have in order for Artemia to thrive? That's an interesting question. And as a matter of fact, what they do is, is, is uh, those Artemia, they actually come readily packed um, with the eggs in salt and food. And what they say here is that 16 grams of this uh, goes to 500 milliliters. Um, so it's already a ready-made mixture. So what I recommend is, is um, if I don't know the, exactly the, the salt concentration, but um, you can research this and Google it because uh, lots of people are growing their own atemia. Uh, so and then you, uh, yeah, basically it will tell you the percentage and then you know how many grams of, of salt you need per per liter of water. Yeah, but those uh, ones are basically already in the right proportion. You dump everything into a predefined volume of water and then um, everything's correct. Yeah. So, yeah, so that is basically uh, what I need now is I need to uh, get again uh, a couple of, sh uh, at least, is this the guy still alive here? Yeah, it's still, it's still, still going. So what I'm going to do probably is I'm, I'm going to just uh, dump the yeast. Let's see the water fleas. Where are the where where are the shrimp? Ah, here they are. So what I'm going to just do is I'm just going to dump the the yeast and the 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 shrimp back in here, and so they have a little bit of food as well. You know what? Um, I'm going to so just going to flush it down here. Here we go. Okay. So now they've got a little bit of food and. Uh, the little animal is also back in the jar. So let's put it over there. I'm going to quickly dry wipe the slide. So, and uh, I'm going to now um, try to pick up. Yeah. Okay, it should be dry enough. So I'm going to now pick up another, uh, another water flea. Let's see if I'm lucky or not. Yep, there is one on here, I think. Going to remove all of the excess again. Okay, so let's uh, simply have a look at it again under the microscope, uh, under the completely normal conditions. So just a second, you want to have to change the microscope view. It's still the old one. So, and here we are. Here we are, that's still, okay. Yeah, and uh, again, what we have over here is, is in the back, we've got uh, the heart here. Okay. And because I added a uh, relatively little water, no cover glass, uh, it's not able to move very freely. 
and I'm going to now try to do the following. I'm going to try to add a little bit of caffeine. Now, I need a reasonably fresh pipette and I don't remember which one I used. So what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to rinse one of them. I'm going to use a little bit of water. Okay. So, and uh, let's uh, give it a, a try. So I'm going to take some of this uh, liquid here. And I, honestly, I don't know if uh, the concentration is right or not. I don't know anything like this. Yeah. And uh, let's add a little bit of the caffeine solution. The particles that you see there um, are still the cellulose particles um, yeah, from, from, from the capsule. Okay. And uh, normally what you do is, is you have to make a video, uh, but uh, the heartbeat is actually, uh, will then significantly increase and you actually can see it already that it's not beating faster than before. Might take a, yeah. So let's add a little bit more. So where is the heart for those of you who joined in late? Let me see. The heart here is in the back. This thing that is speeding here in the back. Yeah. And uh, when I tried this yesterday, I was really able to speed up uh, the speed it up quite a bit. Okay. If you remember just how fast it was before, you know, it was significantly slower. Yeah. Yep. Here it is. If you, if you uh, maybe when the video is then online, um, you can actually then uh, watch before and after. You can replay the whole thing and watch before and after the addition of caffeine. So it's uh, of course possible because uh, um, being crustaceans, uh, they have a nervous system. Um, and of course, caffeine will not uh, have the effect uh, in single cell organisms because uh, they do not have a nervous system. If its heartbeat got so fast, would it be dangerous for the organism? Um, <laughs> a colleague of mine, another teacher um, who's done the experiment already before said, if you add too much caffeine, you're going to kill the animal, obviously, which is not surprising um, because uh, pretty much any substance that you add too much uh, will, is going to harm an organism. Even, I don't know, if I add too much sugar, for example, even though it might use sugar as a food source, it's going to completely um, osmotically uh, yeah, be unfavorable and even that might harm it. Yeah? So, uh, so that's nothing unusual because it's simply not, uh, not part of the natural environment. Yeah, okay, uh, so that's basically all I wanted to, to show you a little bit here. Let's go down again a little bit with the magnification here. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it feels pain. Um, <laughs> there is, uh, there are, it's an interesting one. Uh, um, to what extent are, are animals sentient? Sentient means uh, um, to what extent are they conscious? And uh, there is no question that uh, animals are able to respond uh, to environmental changes. I mean, all living things are do that. It doesn't matter uh, fungi, plants, they, all living things have to respond to the environment. Plants will grow towards light, the roots will grow towards water, and so on. Um, uh, microorganisms uh, who do not have, which do not have a nervous system um, will respond uh, to, to the environment. Okay, so paramecia moving towards oxygen and so on. But uh, the question of whether they are able to feel something or to what extent they are able to feel something and if uh, is uh, very difficult uh, uh, to answer. Okay, um, they are doing uh, experiments uh, right now on so-called cuttlefish. These are uh, little, look like little octopuses, um, which are very intelligent, these animals. And they are um, actually able to, to even make decisions. And uh, so scientists are actually now thinking, well, if the animals are that intelligent, um, are they actually able to uh, have a subjective uh, yeah, a feeling of pain? 
Um, it might be possible. Uh, we don't know that. Uh, um, however, it is sometimes not even necessary to feel pain in order to respond to the environment because it, uh, the certain responses uh, to environmental changes that are possible without uh, the necessity to feel pain. So this is a, a very difficult question, I think, uh, to answer because uh, we cannot look into the organism. And uh, essentially now with uh, all of the artificial intelligence uh, software uh, yeah, becoming more and more popular these days, of course, uh, this is also a question uh, which uh, um, has uh, other interesting <laughs> um, consequences. If a computer starts to become intelligent, is it then able to get a form of self-awareness? Even yeah? So even that is uh, being discussed now. So these are very interesting and complex uh, questions. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Concerning animal rights and all these things, of course, it's an important thing. Yeah? So this is also one of the reasons why when I uh, do, uh, uh, for me, I have absolutely no problems, uh, for example, adding certain substances to microorganisms. Uh, but usually when I um, yeah, deal with uh, slightly larger organisms, of course, uh, um, yeah, I put them back into the container then because, yeah, it's uh, yeah, not because I necessarily think that uh, uh, they're able to feel pain or so, but it's simply also a question of, of uh, a certain basic respect uh, um, of life yeah, that I would like to have. Yeah? I was looking at a water sample from a coffee machine, dip tray, and there was something that in the water that moved so fast before I could focus the image, it just kept zooming past, speedy blur. And the, uh, the coffee drip uh, liquid <laughs> is a, a, an extremely nutritious uh, environment for my microorganisms, fungi, bacteria. Uh, would not, wouldn't surprise me if there are even some larvae, some insect larvae in there if you forget about it. Yeah? Some flies might deposit their eggs in there. Yeah? So um, it's quite well possible that there are some, uh, some larvae um, in there as well. Yeah? Um, okay, um, yeah, it's what makes fa science fascinating, yeah? Might have been a paramecium in the coffee. Yeah, uh, y y y the thing is the following. Uh, every, yes, but how did it get in there? It, it's always one of the questions. Uh, um, they cannot form on their own, so there must be some way how the, the coffee water must have become contaminated. It could be that something was carried in by dust, that's a very common form, or by other insects that carry along microorganisms, but they will not develop on their own. So um, every time when you find uh, something in an apparently isolated place, like the coffee drip water, um, it must have come from somewhere, okay? Um, will the heartbeat eventually decrease? I mean, will it adapt to the caffeine? Um, I don't know, but that is indeed also one of the things that uh, could be um, investigated, is the effect of adaptation. Yeah, um, to uh, to uh, to caffeine, and then of course, I mean, but that would almost be already a a, a master's thesis or PhD thesis is the form certain form of inheritance. So that means if it becomes adapted to caffeine, is this then passed on to the next generation by something uh, called uh, uh, epigenetics? Okay, so that is uh, yeah, it's, um, it might be also something that can be um, uh, investigated. Yeah. Could this caffeine experiment possibly work on rotifers as uh, they have multicellular and have a simple brain? I don't know. I don't know, but uh, um, I, I see why not. Okay. Uh, dust. Uh, yeah, dust. Well, the thing is the following. Ah, uh, yeah. So this refers again to the coffee. Um, you see, um, there is a dust, um, of course, in the air, and this dust uh, carries pollen, carries, um, I don't know, dirt, carries. Um, whatever um, in it and uh, bacteria um, if I don't know maybe there was a storm somewhere and some water was whipped up uh, from a pond yeah, so it could be that even the paramecia are in the water um, yeah, microscopic water droplets and carried along yeah but what I wanted to say is, is that uh, if you find something in the coffee uh, drip water um, then it will um, there must have been somehow a way that it was transported into that liquid from the outside somehow yeah? It cannot form it on their own. On their own yeah? Some of the big four microscopy companies uh, do carry 150 times lens for the Brightfield and DSC. I'm not clear if they will work well since the light microscopy have their limitation from visible sp uh, spectrums. Well, uh, uh, interesting. I'm hearing the first time that I have a 150 times lens. Um, yeah. Um, hmm. So this is an interesting question. Yeah. Um, I, um, I would, gen I mean, these must be highly specific applications, I would say. Yeah? 
Uh, I always thought that dust was a bit dry for paramecium. Actually, correct. Paramecium does not form. Paramecium does not form any cysts that are able to survive dryness. But yeah, if it is paramecium, then it must have come from somewhere. But it's correct. Actually, uh, thinking about it, paramecium is not uh, unle unless it's some kind of a microscopic water droplet where it was kind of uh, yeah able to be transported. Yeah? So okay, so this is basically the. Uh, I've been talking a lot about the Daphne here. Um, I don't know. Should I try this? I don't know if I want to try this also in one of those. Um, yeah, the, the, the Artemia brine shrimp. Some caffeine. Not tried that before either. Let's remove this here a little bit. Okay. Let's put this somewhere else. This one over here. Yep. This guy seems to be still going. So let's uh, take a new slide and. Uh, uh, here are these the yeah these seem to be the are these the shrimp which, which ones are the uh, these are the the brine shrimp now okay so let's uh, I'll try to pull out another one here and I don't know okay ah uh, you don't see what I'm doing you don't see what I'm doing because I did not switch the thing here so so you already got a water sample here without anything in it. So here now I got one and I'm going to remove the excess water. Okay. So there's still a little bit of water here. So let's uh, switch on the microscope view again. And so here it is. Okay. I mean, there is no heart right now to, to look at. Um, but I don't remember which one I used now. Yeah. So let's add also a little bit of, just a second, a little bit of uh, a small drop of caffeine. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't respond so much. It rolled up a little bit, but this could be maybe a little bit because of a different salt water concentration. Yeah. Again, those uh, tiny dots that you see are some of the impurities of the caffeine tablet or capsule. Yeah, I don't see a big difference here. Maybe it takes a couple of minutes for the caffeine to work. But in this case, it would be indeed a, a yeah. Let's just wait a little bit here, okay? Um, yeah, I heard that there is a nematode that can only found in growing in wet, in wet beer uh, coasters. Is that true? How can that be? Um, not necessarily only beer, I guess, uh, but also kombucha and uh, vinegar. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to show you something because you were just asking some nematode worms here 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 we go <laughs> here these are so-called uh, vinegar eels they're called these are tiny nematode worms um i'm, I'm just gonna switch again no it doesn't seem to be a big influence here okay uh but um, again um where is the desk view here uh, too small to see there are nematode worms in here you know what why not show them also under the microscope <laughs> because you were asking um where did I get them from? Um, yeah, from a, a colleague uh, Yeah, where I work because he's got, believe it or not, an aquarium and he's growing them for fish food, <laughs> of course. Um, and uh, those worms, as a matter of fact, some people who make their own uh, fermented beverages like kombucha and, and so on, and maybe possibly even, I don't know, if you might make your own wine, um, all of a sudden they might start to appear. But again, these are contaminants and they appear because uh, um, tiny flies uh, which carry their eggs might land um, in, yeah, in the liquid and then this is how they reproduce. Okay, um, I've been basically, what you do is, is you take a little bit of some vinegar, you mix it with sugar and water, um, and then they're pretty happy. So I've been growing them now for months, I don't know, half a year in here. Um, and uh, yeah, because you were asking, <laughs> why not also put them under the microscope um, a little bit? Let me quickly um, go through the um, yeah, questions again before I do that. Okay, um, some of the big four companies, yeah, 150 always thought dry yes okay uh can you check its heart the heart okay well the heart of the 
I don't know the heart of the, of this one over here, but the heart of the Daphnia. I'm going to put the Daphnia back again as well. So we can quickly check the Daphnia as well. Where's the Daphnia? Oh, here it is. Still beating. Oh yeah, it's still moving. Maybe maybe it's starting to uh, re uh, reduce it, its movement a little bit because uh, the water is starting to evaporate, so it's a little bit limited in its movement. Yeah, but it's still still going. Yeah. And uh, here, this one is the yeah the sea monkey. Okay. Um, I meant the po uh, the wood paper placement mat that the beer glass is placed on the wood paper placement mat that the beer glass is um, if okay I get it so there is a sometimes what you have in some countries it's customary that you put a beer glass or the beverage glass on some cardboard or some uh, some cork and uh, the question is is now is is it possible that there are some uh, yeah worms in, in there and the the thing is, is of course why not <laughs> i once had the the i was eating somewhere once and i could actually see there were tiny holes in 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 um, in that and indeed there were some insects in there um so um maybe not nematode worms because those nematode worms sometimes they need a lot of water and moisture so it's possible if it's not properly stored but sometimes there can be la la insect larvae that eat uh, the wood and the paper yeah, and they start to make a little yeah, um, yeah, a cocoon in those. So that's possible. Yeah? Um, yeah, it's a lot calmer than it used to be. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So um, you know what? Um, I'm just going to show you um, some 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 of those nematode worms. So what I'm going to do now is is I'm going to again rinse a little bit the pipette. Okay. And uh, I'm going to simply put into the, um, yeah, into this, uh, uh, where is it? Maybe into here. Let's put everything away. Here I'm just going to put a, a few drops of the so-called of the vinegar eels. Uh, sometimes they gather at the top uh, because this is where the oxygen is most. But, so I hope I was able to catch a few of those. So let's have a look um, under the um, stereo microscope first. Oh yeah, I don't see a lot. Let me quickly check directly sometimes. They're tiny. Hmm. I am not happy. Why am I not seeing anything? Let me, let me try again. I'm going to now get something from the very bottom. Some solid stuff here. Maybe that's easier to see. Okay. Or they might be a little bit too small. Yeah, they're yeah, I see them, but they're they're too small. For stereo microscopy, I think they're too small. You might see some movement. Okay. So I'm, I think, yeah, you, you, you can see some movement uh, going on there. But what I'm going to do is, is uh, I'm going to put them uh, under my regular uh, compound microscope. Uh, the, the contrast is miserable and uh, they're too small. Um, if you replace the vinegar with citric acid solution with the same pH, would they grow? I don't know. Um, um, I mean, they are actually optimized to grow in vinegar. And that's why they're called vinegar eels, uh, because vinegar is a yeah occurs naturally. So, for example, in fruits, when you have um, fruits uh, falling down from from a tree, uh, then uh, they will start to ferment because of bacteria making alcohol, and uh, some uh, and some of the alcohol will then be converted to vinegar. So, vinegar is a, a normal substance um, which occurs in high concentration in nature. Uh, now, citric acid, I think, does not occur. Um, at that high concentrations in nature, right? And for this reason, I kind of doubt that they're optimized, um, yeah, to um, to grow in citric acid. But you know what? Just uh, to show you a little bit that actually, where is this? I'm going to always close everything off again because I don't want. Yeah, I'm just going to make now a slide here. 
I'm going to take a little bit of this here. And uh, so now, of course, I have to put a cover glass on top. And uh, where are my cover glasses? Here, here they are. And uh, up. Let's switch microscopes again. How's the? Here it is. Ah, it's kind of moving slower, but again, maybe uh, it's inhibited a little bit because the water is evaporating. Let's have a quick check uh, how the Daphnia is doing. Uh, here, still going. I think it really, there is too little liquid here. So I'm going, to, uh, here, this is a little bit, yeah. So let me remove this now and let's take out both of them. And, uh, and then let's have a look at the vinegar eels, the nematode worms. Here we go. Okay, a little bit blurry. I'm going to put it like this, like this. Let's go up with the magnification. And I need to focus. Here we go. Okay. The slide is a little bit dirty. Yeah. You get the idea. And let's go up yet again a little bit more. Yeah. So also many possible, many possibilities for experiments and for observations. Yeah. Those uh, coasters would need to be constantly wet for nematodes. Yes, I think so. That uh, that's uh, yeah. That's why I think they might be. You might have seen some some larvae. Yeah? Are they using the acetate uh, for uh, sustenance? Yes, uh, the, the, what I added is, is I added vinegar and sugar. And uh, um, what they're doing is uh, they're, they're feeding on that. Yeah, so they kind of uh, are able to survive uh, relatively high um, um, acid concentrations. And uh, this way you can essentially grow them yourself. So I, I think I might have to uh, yeah, add a little bit more vinegar um, again and uh, and these were basically made by um, a, yeah, by a colleague, working colleague of mine who ba feeds baby fish with those nematodes. Toads. Yeah. I'd seen a microorganism under the, uh, under the microscope. It looked like an egg shaped and swarmed swarm really fast. It wasn't able to identify it. I know that it was a big question. Do you have any idea? If it looks like an egg, uh, could it be? And if it looked kind of hard, and it was very large. It could have been an ostracod. These are also water crustaceans, but they have kind of two shells. It's almost like they almost look a little bit like a clam. Yeah. Um, but they, um, yeah. But otherwise, it's it's. Uh, but they're pretty pretty comparatively large. So it depends a little bit on 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 the size. That yeah. Yeah. How big are they? Um, what are you now referring to? Uh, if you're referring to those, if you're referring to those nematode worms, they're approximately a millimeter or two uh, in length. So pretty tiny, but they're very thin. And therefore you can barely see them with the unaided eye. So if I look at it uh, like here, I am able to see something. It looks a little bit like a cloudy, uh, yeah, cloudiness. So there's something there, but I'm not quite well able to see the shape because they're so thin, but under the microscope, you're, you're, um, as you're able to see here, you're able to see that. Huh? So yeah, so the nematodes, so they are approximately maybe half a millimeter, millimeter, maybe the larger ones up to two millimeters in length. Yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah. A picture of the, of the organism. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they, uh, they move quite uh, rapidly. Sometimes I like to look at them um, also um, at a higher magnification so you're able to see a little bit uh, the, the actual organs. But uh, because they move so quickly, it can be a little bit difficult sometimes. Yeah. I wonder what is the smallest organism we can see with uh, our naked eye. Generally, as a general rule of thumb, the resolution of the human eye at a reading distance, the average normal human high eye of a young person, the older you become, the worse your eyes become, obviously, might look at me, <laughs> but um, at a normal reading distance of 25 centimeters, but the size that's defined as the reading distance, um, uh, the human eye is able to see uh, one tenth of a millimeter. 
Okay, so uh, approximately um, a, a tiny dot with a pencil. However, um, the contrast must be good enough. Okay, so if it's uh, if the contrast is not there, you're not able to see it. Now, which organism would be like this? The human egg cell, for example, is fairly large and can just barely be seen if you were able to see it with an unaided eye. Um, yes, I can also see paramecia with an unaided eye without a microscope. Um, um, on the microscope slide as a small tiny moving dot if the background is dark and if the lighting is correct I can see small tiny dots moving on my microscope slide being the paramecia but I'm not able to see the shape just tiny white little dots um, so um, and they are pretty large cells so um, short answer would be yes you are able to see individual cells with without a microscope provided that the contrast is is high and provided that they're fairly large Okay, so um, yeah, but any of the details uh, in, in the cell is, is of course not, not possible. Yeah? So this is basically where some just because somebody was asking about nematode worms, I just wanted to show them to you. Okay, and uh, yeah, you see there are not so many here. It used to be full, but uh, many of them already seem to be have a little have died already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and sometimes what they do is, is uh, there were many more here before, sometimes they move uh, to the side somewhere where there is more oxygen. Yeah. Could be that they, they're gathering somewhere and I don't know where. Okay. So let's move this out a little bit. Let's. Do you, uh, by the way, uh, uh, can, uh, by the way, <laughs> um, if you look at all of those uh, uh, dots in the background over here, okay. Um, yeah, some of them, some of those dots are a little bit of red. Yeah, uh, this is all dirt on the cover glass. No, here's the end of the cover glass. Yeah, and here that's uh, the microscope slide because I did not dry wipe uh, the the cover glass. Normally, I, I usually always use this. If, yeah, this uh, cleaning uh, cleaning cloth. Yeah, um, to dry wipe uh, the cover glass and the slides before use. I did not do this here, and that's why you see all of this uh, grease and grime. Probably some, yeah, some, some, something left over from the manufacturing process. Yeah. So uh, let's have, uh, yeah. Where is the? This is the one, the Daphnia with the. I think what was this? Again, what is this? Ah, yeah, that's the Daphnia with the yeast. Oh, look, there's just a tiny one. Look, there's a, there's a tiny one here, <laughs> a baby, <laughs> a baby one in the back. <laughs> Up, up, yeah. Likes to stick around there. What is it doing? No, no, no it's gone. Here it is. Yeah, if you're lucky, you can sometimes see them actually give birth. <laughs> let's, let's make it a little bit larger here. Here it is. Jumping around. <laughs> Yeah, look, look, look at the size comparison. Yeah, yeah. Uh, adult one and over here. Where, where is it? Here, this the small one. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> it's in interesting to see the size. Uh, yeah, the size difference. <laughs> yeah, and uh, for those of you who joined, all of those tiny little dots that you see in the background, these are yeast cells that are added um, as food and also to make it a little bit better visible, the water movement. I wonder why it's always sticking to the mother over there. Is this, if this is coincidence, well, I don't even know if it's the mother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so again, a couple of quotes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rewatch this one. It's so late. Yeah, uh, everything will be, uh, is, uh, is uh, available online, of course. Yeah. What would the average lifespan be? I have no idea. Uh, I'll. <laughs> So it reminds me of a, of 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 of, um, of a of a question. Uh, for those of you who don't know me yet so much, I'm I'm in my real life. I'm a biology teacher. I've been teaching also smaller kids, yeah, uh, in secondary school. And uh, uh, when we've done domestic animals, uh, the kids uh, always want to know uh, how old does a, can a pig or a cow become. Right. Some students also ask me how old can whales become? Yeah? Those mammals. I mean, um, and the reason why they ask this question is, is because uh, 
um, yeah, they want to yeah, identify a little bit with themselves. So this, uh, this question about the, 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 the lifespan of, of uh, those organisms is, is uh, quite important uh, to, to, for some people. And the problem is only I didn't know. I don't know. <laughs> I did not know the, the age of, of uh, the natural lifespan of those. So <laughs> I kind of uh, saved myself. I didn't say I didn't know. I don't know. I just said, well, unfortunately, or these days, uh, yeah, we keep domestic animals as a sort of source of food. So uh, they, they're not able to survive so long because they end up uh, on our, our dinner plate. <laughs> yeah, and then they usually, yeah, they're a little bit shocked by my answer and then they forgot about the question that they asked. <laughs> But uh, no, I don't know how old they can become in the natural. Uh, the thing is, is that um, in nature, sometimes um, they're yeah simply eaten by fish. So um, I don't know if uh, if there is uh, if they're even able to survive to a natural uh, yeah uh, lifespan of old age. Yeah? So that, that that's actually uh, something that uh, I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah, at the at tortoises, it can live hundreds of years. Yeah, part of the food chain. Yeah, they are part of the food chain, and and yeah, I mean there are certain organisms. I mean theoretically, I mean for example, if you look at single-celled micro microbes like Paramecia and and so on, strictly speaking, they do not die of old age. They don't have a, this co a concept of a lifespan. If they become too large, then they simply will divide. Yeah, and then you have two of them. So the concept of, of, of lifespan, and, and you can actually say they, they live indefinitely, right? Uh, because uh, if they grow in size and if they're large enough, they will simply divide. But they might die, of, or they will die, of course, if the pond water starts to dry up um, or if they're eaten or yeah, well, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like toads, <laughs> they can live 50 years, but they get eaten yeah, when they're five months old. Mm -hmm. So, okay, um, so for those of you who just basically joined in, uh, a short summary of what I've been doing uh, today in this, uh, in this uh, live stream, I showed you this here is Daphnia, a water flea um, over here. Yeah, some, some nematode worms yeah, that I did not plan to show you, but uh, ended up showing you anyway. And uh, I don't know if, they're, if this guy is still happily alive or not. I have over here um, some so-called Artemia brine shrimp also known as sea monkeys. Yeah, so here, here is one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, then there was also Daphnia, which we just had a look at, of course, um, which basically is, uh, yeah, uh, so-called the water fleas. Yeah. So I just simply wanted to, to, uh, show you a couple of, uh, of slightly larger organisms. What I've also tried to do is I tried to, uh, with limited success, um, show you some of the things that are using my stereo microscope. Here it is. Let me see. Where is it? Here we go. Here, that's now the slide. Yeah. Maybe a little too, too large. Yeah, but you see, the, you see the light reflections and therefore it's not quite, uh, yeah, quite easily uh, visible. Yeah. And uh, if this is too bright, then I'm going to try to flip this around here. And here, now no, maybe, where is it? Here it is, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe also light from the top might help a little bit. Yeah. So again, plenty of uh, things to experiment, okay. Um, yeah, so do you mind if I send you the picture of the unknown organism now and you can help? You, you can send it to me. I don't have the email accessible here. Uh, but you know what? If you want to uh, send it to me, I'll, uh, yeah, you know what we can do? Um, if you have any pictures of, of, of anything interesting that you want to share, please uh, send them to me. If you want, uh, we can, uh, I can include them in the next uh, live stream. Okay, we can have uh, to, to get a look at some of the pictures together. If you want to send me, um, yeah, um, something you can, I don't have something to write. Do you have anything to write here? Oliver at microbehunter.com. That's my email address. And uh, you just send me some pictures and we can share them. And then maybe um, some of you can help me identify or help us identify them. Um, I don't have it. Uh, see, I'm perfectly well prepared because I have nothing to write here. Oliver um, at microbehunter.com. I'm going to type it into the chat here. That's my email. And uh, you just send me some of the pictures. Maybe we can uh, have a look at them together. 
and maybe some of you can also help identify. Mm. Hunter.com. So that is my my email. Okay, here it is. No, 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 no. Nicrope Hunter. I mistyped. Can can I erase this? Oliver at microbehunter.com. Microbe Hunter. Not microbe Hunter. Send. Okay, that is that's the one. I, I, I mistyped. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so here, here we go. Um, and uh, you can just send me some pictures, and then yeah, I'll, we can we can share. Actually, that that that's, uh, would be a nice thing because one of the points of this live stream is also to create a little bit of a community and keep people motivated uh, with microscopy and uh, yeah, to have some fun together. Actually, that's I think the yeah. Uh, the, the the most one of the most important things here um yeah i would say i'm just going to leave it at that again it's again one hour and 24 minutes that i've been talking yeah um if you have any specific things uh, that you want me to look at of course we can do that um and or um you just uh, send me um also some pictures and then we can um we can have a, a look at them uh, together okay um i'm going to just put it in here again because i just want to see now what happened Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let me see. Still, still, still beating. Okay, the heart. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds good. I might try to send some videos if they're not too big. You can also send me videos. Okay. Um, and uh, then I can um, also play them in, if they're not too long or too big. Then I can also play them, um, of course, uh, in in the live stream. Okay. So it's absolutely not uh, technically absolutely not a, a problem. Okay. Yeah. Kleine Film uh, uh, Fragments, is das auch okay? Yes, uh, small uh, video clips, for small film clips is also uh, possible. What I can do is, is I can easily include uh, videos uh, um, in, in this live stream. So all I do is, is just basically, just like I can, can include pictures, okay? I can also include, um, quite easily I can include uh, videos, uh, videos as well, okay? Um, What's your favorite microorganisms? Um, yeah, a similar question already appeared at the beginning of this live stream. Um, I, I like to look at all of them. I can tell you one of my least favorite ones, maybe bacteria, pretty boring, I think. <laughs> I actually, during my university studies, I studied them quite a bit, but I think they're not so exciting when you look at them under the microscope. And most people, or many people are interested in seeing bacteria because they're known, right? But I think uh, they're not so uh, totally, not very interesting because they're kind of small. Um, but if you ask me what, uh, which ones are quite nice to look at, Usually the larger um, organisms uh, where you can look into the organism, for example, water bears are very common. Um, not always easy to find. You need a reasonably fresh moss where you can find them. But that would be also one possibility of, in an upcoming live stream that we have a look at some water bears as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, basically keep yourself um, also motivated by experimenting around, uh, putting stuff under the microscope. I think I'm going to leave it at that uh, today again i hope that you liked it um, do visit also my my other youtube channel the main one the main micro hunter channel i want to post uh, videos a little bit more frequently than i did before um, also important um, i know it's a little bit uh, yeah it would be cool if you still could if you like these things i would like to invite you to subscribe um, not only to mine but also to of course uh, other microscopy YouTube channels because uh, this is a very important and big motivation for those people who make the YouTube videos uh, to keep on doing that. Okay, and I also encourage you that uh, if you want to share your um, own observations, if you have a camera and so on, yeah, just upload them, load them into your own YouTube channel. You can just upload some clips. You don't even have to narrate it or anything, um, and uh, then you can share them. Also, for example, over Reddit. Uh, Reddit, uh, the microscopy subreddit is, is quite popular as well. Um, yeah, so why, why not share a little bit uh, the things that you're able to see and observe? I would like to simply encourage you to do that, okay? Yeah, so I'm quickly going to go through the last remaining comments and then I'm going to simply uh, sign off, okay? Uh, thank you and greetings to everyone. Yes, uh, can one culture ostracods? I never tried it, okay? Never tried it, okay? Um, you see, there is uh, plenty of things to, to experiment here. Thank you for a very fun and informative stream, as always. Thank you very much. Great time. Yeah. Nice weekend. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thumbs up. Thank you. And I would say all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting, as always. And hopefully see you again next week. Okay. Bye-bye.